Hi, Blue Skies. Uh, I'm super grateful to be here um, and, and ha to have been invited to the festival. I always love Blue Skies and I really miss um, seeing Magoo's wardrobe changes uh, when we do this virtually, but maybe I'll still see them when it plays. But anyhow, thanks a lot. Um, Blue Skies was one of the first festivals that I went to play uh, after being on the road in Nashville and touring really, really heavy. And when I got there, I just didn't know what to think. You know, we had uh, uh, Colin, or Jane and I had Colin, our son, with us, and he was just a little kid. And we saw kids playing everywhere, and it was the hardest thing in the world for us to let go and tell them to just go play. And we did, and am I ever glad we did. And that sort of sums up Blue Skies. But anyhow, super grateful for the opportunity. And uh, I've got a band, but my drummer is stuck in Michigan, and he can't get across because of COVID. So that's going to be about another month before he makes it. And my guitar player... Uh, has only had one shot so unfortunately it's just me here in my basement studio and my really poor video skills but I, I hope it works out okay uh, the first thing maybe I'd like to do is you know I've been really lucky to get to play at the Grand Old Opry a lot over the years and one of my heroes was a guy named DeFord Bailey DeFord Bailey was one of the first real country music stars and yet a lot of folks don't know about him he put up with a lot of heat and I used to ask Roy Acuff and Bill Monroe to tell me stories about him and they'd say things like, you know, when we wanted to draw a crowd at our shows, we'd bring DeFord with us because when he played, the people would come out to see him. And the really crazy thing is DeFord was black and of course he put up with all the, the trouble that you can imagine persevering through all of that while the other guys would get a hot meal. DeFord would either have to sleep uh, on the bus or on the ground or be walked into a dangerous part of town. Meanwhile, he was the big draw and uh, totally influential. Influenced people like Sonny Terry and Sonny Boy Williamson and just all kinds of players. But uh, if you were tuning into the Grand Old Opry in the late 30s, 40s, this is the first thing you'd hear as the Opry started and you're dialing your radio in through the static. It's a train imitation called the Pan American, so I'll try and play that to start off here. That's straight to Ford Bailey, one of my real heroes. And if you get a minute, take the time to uh, check him out online. It was crazy. He's just really short guy, and it was before they had microphones at the Opry, and uh, he used to play into a megaphone. And uh, I guess he played super quiet. That's what Roy Acuff told me. Um, I play the opposite of that. So that was my impression of of DeFord Bailey. Um, the next one I'll do is completely different. This is one that uh, I wrote for the um, the Atlantic Ballet of Canada. And they wanted a piece, and uh, I really like what they do. They do some incredible uh, dance with a real social conscious in a lot of cases. And uh, they invited me to write something for the ballet, but they didn't know I couldn't read music. 
And so I kind of faked my way through it. And I was a really busy year and I was on tour constantly. And uh, I hadn't written anything for them yet. And they were really polite and they keep sending me messages, you know, that, um, uh, is it ready yet? You know, have you, have you written us? You know, we're excited. We can't wait. And it was going to premiere at the Capitol Theater in uh, Moncton, New Brunswick. You know, all dancers and everything, and I'd be playing it live with a, with a looper. So I was feeling the pressure, feeling the pressure, and finally I sat down and envisioned the ballet and just kind of improvised this piece, you know, 15 minutes long with all the parts in it, and uh, I recorded it right then and sent it off to them, and, and they got back to me later that day and said, it's perfect, it's just what we need. So I thought, oh, this is great. I actually wrote a ballet. Little did I know that they actually choreograph every second of that ballet. And uh, I had to remember every part of that improvisation. So to continue on, I'm touring and touring and touring. And uh, I, I'm in a Glulik playing the Rockin' Walrus Festival, which so honored to do it. And as I was walking off the plane, uh, an elder, Abraham, little, little short guy, uh, it'd be about 80, I think, um, uh, through an interpreter, asked if I would play a traditional Ayaya song with him. And we sat together with the interpreter and, and figured out that it was uh, one, I think, from his family history about catching a giant walrus. And, and I really just didn't want to wreck it because it was so nice that he would invite me to do it. So I went on stage and, and played it with Abraham and um, we were kind of joking around, even though there was a, a language barrier, and he was gracious, and I'm sure I messed it up, but I got through it. And afterwards, we went back to a little room with the interpreter, and I said to the interpreter, you know, um, I have no skills here in a glue lick. Uh, you know, I would fall through the ice, or something would eat me. I, I wouldn't last any time at all. I wouldn't last you know, uh, four hours out there uh, on the land, something would would get me. I, I just have no skills. So the interpreter turned to Abraham and said that to Abraham. And Abraham, this, this little guy, looked at my feet and then he looked up at my head and he sat there for a minute and then he said something to the interpreter. And... Uh, the interpreter wouldn't tell me what Abraham said. So, you know, it was probably only 30 seconds, but it felt like an hour. And finally I said, what did, what did Abraham say? What did Abraham say? And the interpreter said, he said you would last a day and a half. So I guess he calculated tiny brain and my fat content right there. So I figured I'd call the ballet piece 36 hours. So I'll play a chunk of that right now if I can get through it here.
That was 36 hours. That's for Abraham. And I'll play you one more. Um, I just, you know, I've got a new record coming out actually in January, a, a band record that I'm really, really excited about. And um, I wish I could play you some of those things that are on the record, but without the band, it's not working out. So we'll have to wait for that. But even music videos and the whole nine yards, usually I'm too busy to do all that stuff, but with the pandemic, <clears throat> it afforded me an opportunity to do that along with some friends. You know, people have been through a lot and, um, and it's just continuing. And uh, with what's happening in Canada and the way they're finally waking up to what so many of us had known forever about residential schools. And um, yeah, so maybe I'll, I'll, I'll end this with uh, Amazing Grace. Thank you.